What is up peeps, welcome back to this new tutorial. So now we're going to be working on the assets. We're going to be modeling the assets that we have in our reference. So we're going to start in this tutorial by the chair. So let's work on it. First, what I'd like to do is to start by modeling the basic shape of it. And after that, we're going to be working on the details. So let's start. I'm going to just put the cursor right in the middle over there. Start with the cube, cube like this. So we can go outside. There is no need to stay inside that room. All right, so starting by these pillows, you can see that our chair is made of three pillows. So let's start to create them. So checking this cube, S, Y, scale it down like this. And also scale on the Z axis. All right, something like this. Maybe scale it even down on the Y axis. Perfect. So let's say that this is the first pillow. So I'm hitting three on the numpad, uh, on the numpad so that we can switch the views. So I'm going to simply duplicate this one, bring it down a little bit and spin it just a tiny bit on the x-axis so our x something like this all right and lastly we have this one on the bottom so let's just duplicate this one and spin it like this move it to the side move it down and also let's check i think it looks like this also over here we must uh, as you can see it's a little bit large so what we can do is first i don't want to scale it on the y-axis like this because this is not the right way to do it. So let's go back over here to the to the global. I'm gonna be switching to the normal way like this. And after that, we can go to the scale and we can scale it like this. Now it's much better. So we can expand it like this, but we must take it back. All right, this one, we can move it like that. And that's, that's the starting point for our pillows, for our chair. So after that, let me add that handle. So on the edit mode, let me select this face, shift S, cursor to select, to select it, shift A, mesh cube, and let's get it way down, bring it out, but also over here, let me just switch back to the global, scale this one down a little bit, focus on this one, switch, switch to the wireframe, and let's grab this one, for example, over here, edit E, go down, all the way down like this, spin it just a tiny bit, when we're going to be adding the subdivision modifier, which one's going to be curved like that. It's going to be better, so don't worry about that. Also, over here, you can use the Control R to insert an edge loop. Control B, bevel it. All right, same thing on the bottom. Oops. On the bottom over here, Control R, take it down. And after that, we can simply select these two faces. Hit E and extrude them out to something like that. Maybe also RX. Can see that shape like this and can hit e to go outside just a tiny bit maybe go up and then we can grab the top faces hit ctrl e and bridge edge loops now it looks pretty much good also we can do something else we can for example add or let me first join everything over here ctrl j this j over here and we can do this so for example on the middle we can insert some edge loops Control R, switch to the wireframe Z, and we can select all these faces, hit X, delete them. Also, let's put the cursor right in the middle, because if we add the mirror modifier right now, let me add it, it's going to be on that other side. So what we need to do is to put it over here in the center, we need to put it right over there. So on the center, on the, on the top view, make sure to select everything, shift S, cursor to select it. Selecting this object, go to object, set origin and origin to the 3D cursor. And now we got it perfectly aligned. Perfect. All right, so now let's add that bottom part. So for that, let's start, let's put first the cursor right in the center. And after that, let's add a cylinder shape. Let's just reduce the vertices to something like the half. Scale it down like this. Scale, scale on the Z axis. So scale, shift Z, just like that also for this bottom face as you can see from these uh, chairs they are not pretty much long so this tip over here must not must be like this something like this okay so also let's create these uh, wheels so for that we can do the following so extrude like this and let me grab for example four faces so we have 16 faces all around so we can grab each four one two three four one two three four so we're going to be selecting every other so one, two, three, four, like this. Hit E to extrude that. And basically we can, we can, so for example, scale shift Z. Yeah, you can see it's a problem. 
So we can do the following. So let me just reverse back, control Z, reverse back. Let me keep this one selected. We can also switch this one to the individual origins. All right, so let's hit E right now. Now it's working perfect. So this is exactly what I want. So let me go to the top to check that size. Yeah, it looks pretty much decent. Also, let's do it on the other side. So let me grab these four faces over here. Same thing over here. E, oops, you can switch at the top, hit E and go like this. Perfect. After that, what we can do is to add this curve that we have over here at the end. So for that, let me just insert that edge loop. So I think we need to make it long a little bit. We will see, we will see how it it's gonna be turned out. Select the first one and the last one, check them down a little bit. Okay, but we must also do this, select everything and take everything down. Yep, just like what we have in our reference. But also what I'd like to do is to find another way to, uh, I just want to work on one way, on one object, not all the four of them. So for that, let me insert or let me just delete all the others. All right, uh, I'm thinking of a way to do this. How can we do this? So we got that four multiplied by four. Okay, so let's try this. Select these four faces, switch to the wireframe and let's select the rest. All of these. All right, HP separate selection. Okay, so let's just delete this part, select this one. So make sure that that's in the center because it's already was in the center. So let's add the mirror modifier to it. All right. And what's going to happen if we increase or, or if we use also the Z axis? Nope. The Y axis. Nope. It's not working. Okay. We can do this. We can alt the air Z by 90 degree and basically we got it. So now if we made one change to this one, check this out. If you check this one up, it's going to be applied to all our details, which is pretty much fine. All right. So let's carry on our work on this part. So we can do this, insert another edge loop, grab these, control, select the first one, control and the last one, can hit E like this. All right. So now let me, let me try to add to this one. Let's add to it the subdivision modifier. Cool. But before doing that, we must, uh, let me just go back. We must apply, apply all the details. So this one, let's apply that mirror modifier. As you can see, it's, we are not able to do that because we used the, all of the uh, duplication. So for that, let's just go to objects, converge into, converge into a mesh. So basically we're forcing that mirror modifier to work. Converge into a mesh. And after that, we can select everything, control J. And basically that's it. All right, so for now, let's add the subdivision modifier. Okay, but as you can see, we have this problem on the top. The reason why we're having this problem is we're having duplicate vertices. You can see that we have duplicates. So in order to fix that, we can uh, select everything, hit M and merge by distance. You can see this merge. We're going to be merging the duplicate vertices by distance. Perfect. Now we fix that problem. So from here, we can insert an edge loop, check it down. Also, we can do the same thing for this. In search also, let me go to the top so that we can make them accurate. Maybe this one we can move it, but also if you want to move it, if you want to slide it, not move it like this, you can hold or uh, click on double G, double G like this. For the wheels, let's start with a cylinder shape or a sphere. Yeah, let's start with a sphere. So let me grab the bottom faces over here to make it right in the center. Shift S, curtis is selected. Shift A, mesh, and let's bring a UV sphere. Let me try this this way. Cut the, the segments by two, also the rings by two. Scale point one, something like this. Also, let's add the cylinder shape scale it down, spin it on the y-axis by 90 degree. Also, let's delete these two faces and keep only these, uh, these faces on the top. So control, select this one, control E 
X delete. So the control E revert the selection, select the other stuff. So let's select everything, hit E and extrude. Something like this. Also we can scale shift X, scale it outside, maybe just a little bit, bring it down. I think it looks fine right now. Okay, so let me check it down like this. Scale it and let's see if it's gonna fit or not. So R Y, let me switch this one to this side. We can also do the following. For example, let's cut our sphere into the half. L to select the other side like this. And we can, for example, select this one. And let me think of a way to make it even better. So first let's add, let's add to it the mirror modifier. The mirror modifier on the on the Z axis. Which makes no sense to have it on the Z, but that's fine. It should be on the X axis the other way. But that's fine. So over here let's do something for example we can make this wheel like this fine I think I like it also for this one we can add an edge double edge over here okay and after that we can grab select these bring them down a little bit yes I like it right now uh, without this edge these edges let's just uh, grab them up Select all of them and bring them up. Maybe scale on the X, scale X. We're not able to scale them because we're still using the individual origin. So let's bring it back to the village point. And let me try to scale X. Fine. So when we're going to be adding the subdivision modifier, it's going to look really good. So let's add that. But also over here, we are using the mirror modifier. I think it's a better way to do this. We can, we can for example, add them divider in the middle select these faces x delete them select this one delete this part and we can select this one and this one control j so basically we're using this mirror you can see that which is perfect okay so let's add on the bottom let's add the subdivision modifier to it right click sheets mode it looks fine also we can do this we can add for example some uh, edge loop Let me see, just to add, I can see some edge over here, but not on the bottom. Let me just revert back. I can do it, for example, over here. Scale this one up. Maybe bring it out a little bit. Yep, something like that. Now it looks pretty much good. Also, uh, we can do this. We can add another edge loop right over there and another one on the top to give it some depth. Perfect. So let me grab it to the top and connect it to our uh, chair. Let me check its uh, global size. I think it looks a little bit tiny. So let's increase its size by 1.25. Fine. All right. So let me go to the top. I'm going to just duplicate this one. Shift D move on over here we can also spin it so spin on the x-axis make it make those rotations a little bit random and spin it as well all right so let me go outside and let's check yeah i think i think the bottom side looks uh, fine yeah it looks fine all right so now let's work on the main chair so let's work on these details so i can see that we have this inset in the middle and also it's a little bit bumpy you can see that so let's get to work on that so for example let's insert double edge loop on the middle select this face and bring it outside okay and also over here let's insert can go we can do the same thing for the back side insert two edge loops over here scale y all right so i can bring it to the left side and we can select alt just select all of these hit e and scale shift to y to go inside but let's fix this problem. I'm going to just delete this face. Okay, and I believe that we have another face on the bottom. This one. X delete it. And from there, we can also do the following. We can uh, activate this clipping. So without clipping, check this out. This is what's going to be happening. So we, can, we will go uh, to the other side. So I'd like to do is to stop right in the middle. So with this clipping activated, we will stop right in the middle. Let me also do it for the bottom side. Select this one. And let's snap it right into the middle. Perfect. 
All right, so also let's add the subdivision modifier so that we can see things more clearly. Okay, right click shade smooth. I think we went far with this this side. So scale shift, uh, shift what? Shift Y, scale shift Y. Let's go outside just a tiny bit. Fine, now I think it starts to look like our shape. Also, let's add those uh, stuff on the on the middle. I don't know what to call them. This this thing. So uh, Control R, like this. Control B to bevel it. Also, we're going to be working on that corner, but now let's just make that shape. So we can do Control uh, E S, scale it down like this, and go inside. And on that center, I'm going to just duplicate that that face. And hit E and go outside. Perfect. So now we got it. Also over here, let me switch to the front. And I'd like to make it a little bit uh, curvy. Something like this. So also over here, since we're using the, the mirror modifier, so it's going to be enabled or activated on the right side by default. All right. So on the bottom side, I'm going to just uh, duplicate this one. So let's just select this unit, hit X, delete it, select the top one with this one and let's ju just duplicate it, shift D, duplicate, move down, spin on the X axis, slide it just a tiny bit, perfect. All right, so now let's add the final one, the one on the bottom. For the one on the bottom, we can, let me just work on it separately. Because I think it looks a little bit different. It has a different shape. So let's insert first two edge loops. Like that. Okay. One to this side and one another one to the right side. Pretty much fine. But also let's add this uh, seam. Or yeah, something like that. So we can, I'm going to just grab this one. Just like which we did with this previous pillows. So hit E, scale shift Z, go inside. But I believe we must delete some faces over here, some extra faces. Let me see. No, actually we're good. We don't have these faces over here, which is perfect. All right. So also we can we can increase that level of viewport. We can take it to two. Now as you can see, we have more details. All right. It looks a little bit. Too perfect so we can for example go to the top view all right so now let's work on these handles so for the handles we can we can do we can try this Control b to bevel all those edges something like this i think it looks pretty nice on the fly which is good also for this one let's add we can you can see that we have some screws like this so let's add them it's gonna add some nice nice variations so control R, first one on the top, control B to bevel that, and let me grab the middle face, hit E, scale it down like this, and we can go inside just a tiny bit. All right, so the final detail that I would like to add to our chair is this top handle, this black leather handle. So for that, let's work on it on the top, but first I'd like to expand this object just a little bit so selecting using the l key and let's scale it on the x-axis by for example 1.5 i think uh, let me check yeah it looks fine it should make no sense to have it uh, very tiny okay so let's work on these top handles so for that i'm going to insert one edge loop over here and another one a little back like this Control b to bevel it we must uh, bevel them both at the same time but that's fine Alright, after that, let me grab them. So select both of these, hit E and scale up. Before that, let me scale, let me create the first one over here. Hit E again, go to the top, E again, and like that. Also, we might we might do this. Might select them like this, Alt, Shift, to select them both. Scale on the X axis, something like this. Alright, so on the top part, let me grab the top faces. Shift S, let's put the cursor over there. Exit the edit mode using the tab key. Shift A, and let's use a cube. So it's gonna be the starting point is a cube. Let me switch to the side like this. Scale on the Z axis. Also, let's take it to the top. Scale it like this. And we might 
yeah scale also on the x-axis okay on the edit mode let's insert two edge loops okay scale on the x-axis a little bit scale y fine and after that we might add yeah let's add two edge loops again scale y like this and after that we can grab the middle face hit e and go up something like that okay so let me add the subdivision modifier to it i think yeah it looks close but let's add let's define those edges even more something like this let's see yeah it looks a little bit too fat yeah i, I see okay so let's add kind of for example grab the bottom faces bring them up all right but also for these we must uh Okay, let me select we can we can do this all to select the entire row and deselect just the, the top and the back faces and scale X to expand this one select everything and make it tiny so now I think it looks better also let's grab the top face bring it down mm, nope let me switch the side switch to the wireframe select the top edges Bring them down a little bit. Fine. Right click, sheet smooth. I think it looks fine right now. Okay. So let's use this one. Also, we might do this. We might let me go to the top view. And bring those scale Y like this. Now it looks pretty much fine. Okay, so let's bring it down like this. Put it on to the top of these two tips. Scale Y. Oops, scale X like that. Maybe bring down. As you can see, these we won't we won't gonna be able to see them very much. So let's just reduce, bring them down like this. All right, fine. Okay, so let's uh, select this one and select this one next. Control J, this J of here, so that we can apply the the mirror modifier switch. But I think we must yeah, as you can see, we must increase its size. It looks uh, pretty much tiny, but also we must bring it forward. I can see that so let's do the following so select everything over here bring it forward try to make it accurate like that select this part scale by 1.25 bring it up let me check now it looks perfect all right so that's our chair so let me just bring it to our room all right so after creating the chair bring it inside the room and simply duplicate it all around following the reference so a key point over here is to keep checking on the position of those chairs based on the camera position so hit zero so that you can see that simply switch the wireframe so that you can make it aligned with the reference as you can see it's not well aligned but we're shooting for something like 85 accuracy okay so thanks a lot for watching if you have any questions leave them down below so if you like this video give it a thumbs up and thanks a lot for watching and i hope to see you in the coming tutorial take care